une mère parfaite. It means in French, a perfect mother. And it's a, a four episode series on Netflix. And George Kaysen and I are going to review it today here on Think Tech, the movie show. Welcome, George. Hey, Jay. Welcome. I like French movies. You know, it helps me remember my French, for one thing. And uh, this is a movie where, of course, they speak very quickly, so you have to work at it. Um, on the other hand, um, it's very French. And what is and what is what puts you off is the fact that it's an American story. It was an uh, uh, I guess it was a CBS program um, in 1997 uh, played in this country. And then I guess uh, Netflix, well, Netflix took it as of only a few days ago, but it was made, I think, in 2021. And uh, it's all the actors are French, and it happens all in France, in Paris. And so it's really interesting to find out that it's American story. So, George, um, what was the story? I, this is a hard question because, you know, through those uh, four episodes, a lot of twists and turns, a lot of who done it possibilities arise. And by the time you ultimately find out who did it, your head is spinning. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell us right away who did it. <laughs> the series starts with this young woman in her early 20s, right? Walking down the street, frantic uh, with her cell phone, hysteric, sort of partially hysterical. And she's walking out of, on the street. And then they have a little uh, vignette of her in a, in, a, in a bar, you know, dancing bar, right? She's dancing with this young guy, right? And um, she's sort of coming on to him, you know, showing him her different parts, you know. Uh, so, uh, and, and then, uh, you know, basically, she calls her mother, right? And her mother's in another, she's, the mother's in Berlin, but she's a French woman initially. And the daughter's in Paris, right? She mm -hmm. calls her mother and tells her mother what's going on that, uh, that uh, the, the police are looking for her too, you know, because there was a murder, you know. So, so bottom line is her mother hops a plane, not with the father, just by herself. And she hops a plane and goes to Paris to try to help the daughter and work this whole thing out, right? And uh, she, she gets there and she looks up one of her old boyfriends before she just left Paris abruptly 25 years before, right? And he's, he, he was a policeman, but now he's an attorney, right? So she sort of starts a, a friendship with him. She tries to renew the friendship, but he didn't understand why she had just abruptly left him and their relationship in Paris and moved to, left town, you know? He never knew what happened. But it seems that the, that the perfect mother had problems with her mother, right? And that's why she left town, right? Okay, so we're after that. So the, the, the perfect mother reminds me of the, the girl from Oslo where that was another mother, you know. This was a mother thing, right? This is her daughter. She's protecting her daughter. So she gets there, and little by little, the pieces start to fall apart. Something is fishy. I, I, I can tell you the mother goes to the dorm room where her daughter's supposed to be, and the, door, the daughter's not there, and uh, she's... Uh, uh, the daughter has sublet her, her unit to, uh, to this uh, other African-American student, or African student. So uh, bottom line is the daughter's not living there. So the mother tries to figure out what's going on and she's able to figure out that the, up to, at a certain point that the daughter is living at this place where they care for women that have been attacked, you know, from, from men and raped and stuff. So let's leave it at that. And then Little by little, as the series continues, right, in four different segments, right, the pieces start to fall into place, and it's a real whodunit, and at the end, there is a shocker, but we'll just leave it at that. I'll let you segue into where you want to be, Jay. We'll take it from you. Well, all these characters are circling the issue about whether the daughter did it. and. Um, 
you, you never really feel that you know what's going on here. In fact, my own, my own reaction to it is I became less and less confident that I knew what was going on as the movie, as the series proceeded. Um, by the end, I was completely confused on what was going on. So it starts out with the uh, the daughter's rendition of it was that somebody um, she 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 was in a bar with a guy by the name of Damien, and uh, uh, he and he was killed uh, in his home. She says um, by um, an intruder of some kind, and uh, the the police who are pretty crisp in this thing they're mm, suspicious they couldn't find any evidence of an intruder. Um, and uh, so she's trying to fabricate, she and her mother are trying to fabricate evidence that there was an intruder. And so you have all these people working on their own agendas, uh, trying to somehow exculpate the daughter from responsibility. Uh, I, and let me, let me back off for a minute and say the, the, uh, the actors are very good. Uh, they're very French. Um, the, there's some wonderful you know, Paris scenery, both indoor and outdoor. Um, and uh, there's some great dialogue, although you, unless you speak French, you don't, you don't get it. You have to look at the, the subtitles. At the end of the movie, the last minute, you find out what, what was going on. Um, and it appears there was an intruder, and he was the daughter's boyfriend. And um, she was, uh, what, um, pr protecting uh, him and her from Damien. And she's the one who stabbed Damien and killed him. And so, I mean, you got to hand her, you know, some credit in, in within the plot uh, for having mm, resisted uh, all the investigation and lying to everybody <laughs> about what happened. No wonder she was upset walking down the street. She was the culprit herself. You don't, you don't figure that out until the last minute. In fact, it gets worse. There's kind of a postscript. Uh, mm. uh, let's see what happens. At the end, you find out, the very end, you find out uh, that he got the money uh, and he, he, he went off with his family because he was married. The intruder was married. She invited him in. Uh, she's the one who created this whole scenario. Uh, he winds up with the money, and she doesn't even know that he's married. I mean, she was completely cuckolded <laughs> by what happened. It is, it is such an odd ending. Did you ever suspect that would happen, George? No. Oh, oh, I never suspected that she would, she would be uh, the one who did it. And that, and the intruder was a lover, right? Uh, now, the one thing that the, 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 the police they said that they, they 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 could not find anybody entering that building, right, where she lived, right, uh, where, where he lived, where David's building from the front. But then you find out that she had contacted this Kamal, her lover from Libya, Libyan, right, and she had told him there's a way to get in from. The roof, you know, you can get in from the next building. How, you know, when, when you think about that, this whole thing was planned. She had planned this, you know, premeditated this whole thing. And then the, 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 you find out at the end that she, she premeditated this whole thing because she knew that Damien had attacked women, you know, wanted to rape women aggressively, right? And, 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 and that uh, she was working at that uh, place for women that had been attacked, right? And, 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 and that she had planned this thing to, to get him in a, in a situation where he, she could, you know, make trouble for him, right? For Damien, right? And then ask for money, right? So, so she thought this whole thing up. I mean, she's got a pretty sharp mind as a, cr a criminal mind there, you know? So, and then you see pictures of the intruder. They find that they can see the intruder. And it's, he's got this black hat on, right? And you don't know who he is until near the end, you start to see, oh my God, this is the guy she's in love with. And then the police are looking for Kamal, right? And she wants to meet him in, in a park, right? 
So she blows his cover, right? And then, but the, but the thing is, the police are, are chasing him, right? They find him, they're chasing him, right? And he's so petrified, a young guy, right? He's so petrified that he jumps out of the top of a bridge, right? And then they're telling him, you know, don't, don't jump, don't jump. So he commits suicide. So she, this is what she created. And then the attorney, you know, her, her former boyfriend, lover for 25 years. The mother, old, mother's lover, the mother's former. The mother's lover, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Mother's lover, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, he covers for the daughter, knowing exactly what the whole situation is. You know, attorneys could be dishonest too to get their client off. So she gets off for all these evil things she did. And the mother takes her back to Berlin, you know. But really not justice served in this Kamal. He shouldn't have been, you know, playing around with this other woman he's married, right? And 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 she did all these horrible things and she gets off scot-free. Not the first time, you know. And her father <laughs> her father in, in Berlin is a uh, physician and he's got some Fari died. He's got some Arab, uh, Islamic patient who's dying. So he's concerned with that. That's why he didn't go initially to to, to Paris. And and then there's she's got a young uh, Anya who is the perpetrator. She's got a younger brother Lucas, who is totally upset by all this. So he he cuts out of his exams, which is important for him to get into college. So the plot twists and turns. As you said, I didn't have a clue. This Anya was the perpetrator, and it was totally premeditated. And the other thing is, Damien's mother is an extremely wealthy cosmetics uh, CEO, right? So she's got a lot of money, and she's she wants Anya fried, right? Because you know this is what she only has a son and her daughter, right? And you know, in a lot of families, the son is put on a pedestal, and the daughter, and and Damien had a sister, and the, the mother never treated the sister the same as Damien. Damien was her prize, you know, and, and, and she never thought Damien could do any wrong. So there's a lot of twists and turns in this plot. It, it shows the power of money, which I well know is just, to me really makes me angry, you know, but she's able to pull, pull, pull a lot of strings because she's, she's a felt, wealth, filthy rich woman, right? So really interesting series. And as you said, you don't know until the end what the real service But you are. see everybody play out their theory of the case. They all have a different theory of the case, including the perfect mother. Uh, mm. And, and um, you know, Anya is making them all dance uh, when in fact she is the perpetrator. Uh, and, and so, you know, and each one moves into the, they move, it's like a circus. They move into the center ring. They try their theory of the case, <laughs> it doesn't work. Somebody else moves in and you're, as the viewer, you're dancing around all these theories because you never come to rest until the very end. Um, it's it's a sort of a ploy on the viewer <laughs> because, because of the way it's set up. Um, and, uh, you know, when they say a perfect mother, they're talking about uh, the last scene more than any other scene uh, where um, she, she finds out that her daughter is the perpetrator, finally. She was protecting her all through the four series. And now she finds out, but she makes a choice to protect her and never reveal um, what happened and that her daughter was the murderer. And uh, the lawyer uh, who was injured and, you know, has to use a cane, he's walking away from her. This is really a very interesting scene. He's walking away. He knows uh, that she knows that two of them are the only ones who know. And he um, joins in her silence. He joins in her conspiracy. But he's really ticked off. She has the mother, a un, un male parfait, has um, disappointed him. Uh, and he, is, he leaves. And it, to the extent that he was infatuated with her, that disappears at the end. Uh, I, I think, it, you know, it, it, is, uh, it does circle around this notion of a perfect mother and what it means that she was willing to break every rule. She was willing to lie and cheat and go to tremendous, um, you know, extremes to protect her daughter. 
even when she had hard copy, before she had hard copy, and even when she had hard copy, that her, her daughter was in fact the guilty culprit. Um, I, I think this French movie, this French series, was actually better than the American uh, back in 1997. It was really well done. Uh, and it, it played with you. I mean, if you take that as a, a, a measurement of how well done a movie is, where you never, you never really find out until the last part of it. Um, and the other thing is, uh, I felt that um, um, the, the idea was based on a true story, you know, back in 1997. When CBS originally did that, uh, it was faithful to a true story about a real murderer and a real daughter and a real mother. Um, and they were making kind of a, I guess it was a, a, a documentary or a, um, a modified documentary, a docudrama of, um, of, of that story. And this is taken off that. I don't know whether this is more accurate in terms of the original events uh, or, or not. But one thing is clear also is that it ends dull thud. It ends where everything is revealed. Now you know exactly what happened. You know who was good, who was bad, what they did. All the mysteries are, are explained and resolved for you. Um, and, I, and I think that's very interesting because people write on the web. They say, when will we have season two? I'm waiting around for season two. And they, they shouldn't have written that question because season one ends so completely ends termine it's done it's done, um, it's done. but yet all these people are asking for a season two i guess they really liked it um but the the response that you get on the web is are you kidding me how could there be a how could you possibly have a season two when everything is revealed there's, there's no hook you know this and and that i guess that's part of this whole thing with these uh, series that you have to leave a hook in order to make a season two or three or four, or whatever it might be. Um, this was just a long, call it a docudrama. Uh, uh, and then it tells you everything that there is to tell. Um, I think a lot, of, a lot of series that you see, whether they're docudramas or not, uh, leave something uh, you know, uh, un, unspoken, unrevealed, uh, and, and a way to get back into it, a way for them to make another season. No. So, George, you know, what, what did you think of this in terms of, um, you know, the movies that you and I have looked at, uh, the, the movies that have, you know, uh, that we have enjoyed, that we have reviewed over the past what, year? Uh, where does this fit? We haven't, done, we haven't done one like this, right? This is the first time we did a, a, a series um, who done it. How do you feel about that as opposed to the others? First, I'll get into the whole thing about the hook, right? With the Kaminsky method, which was a series, there was always a, usually some kind of a hook to the next one, right? Even though there was that gap with uh, Alan Alda's uh, part, you know, where he didn't show his sickness, it just showed him the next time he did, but there was also a hook. And then when we had Art of the Crime, you know, there was that, that was also French, right? And that also had to do, there was sort of like questions there of, you know, what exactly you know, transpired. But um, this one, it leaves you sort of, like you said, a, a sort of a thud at the end. Because um, you never think that that young woman, young woman, she done this, you know? She, you know, and it was all premeditated. And what bothered me, like it bothered you and the, the attorney, her for, the mother's former lover, boyfriend for 25 years, he was pursuing uh, the Kamal thread, right? And, and he went into this drug dealer area and they threw him off a of fourth floor and he almost died. He, he fell on a the top of a, a, a roof of a car, right? And he broke his hip and he broke some ribs. So he had really been, he, he came very close to dying, you know? And he did all of this for his former girlfriend, right? And, and then at the end, all that was to, for naught because it was the daughter that had really done the murder. 
and yet he did still he still didn't you know, didn't open his mouth and just let it happen right because he still had feelings I guess for the mother but it shows that there, to, to me there's something wrong with this when a when a murderer can get away with it you know so uh, and it, to, to, and looking back to the the other one that we that we did like a part of the crime I'm trying to think what else was similar to this thing that, now in terms of the the perfect mother. There was the girl from Oslo, right? Where that was the perfect mother, and she saved her daughter. But her daughter had done any hadn't done anything wrong. And that as well, the youngest Billy woman had her throat cut, which really bothered me. I didn't want to see that movie. It bothered me. Her brother survived, you know. It was like uh -huh. Pearl, what was his name? And they slit his throat, the jihadist. So, but bottom line is, this is sort of a different ending, you know. It's it's not really. It's, it's an ending that leaves a hole in your heart, hole in your head, that this woman got away with this, man. And the mother, the perfect, I don't consider her the mother, the perfect mother, because she's letting her daughter get away with murder, literally, you know? So I don't know. I, that's pretty much, I kind of think some of the other things we've looked at that would tie into this, but you know, I, I don't remember anything else. I, I could go back to all of them. The genocides, the maiden, the Ukrainian thing, 2014, and then uh, underground railroad he did, and then and then uh, the guy, the father who was uh, had Alzheimer's, played by the guy that played Hannibal Lecter. I can't remember his name right now. You know. Well, that was very good. Yeah. So I mean, all, all of these ended in a, in, a, in a certain way, but this movie ended very different. They're very different. Yeah. From at the end, that's a thought for me. And what was a, it? Was a fake out because you were, you were, praying in the course of the series to be sympathetic to the young girl, who was pretty and sweet and traumatized by what had happened. You you never thought that she was a, a cold blooded killer. I mean, for example, she had uh, the the rape drug. Remember that yes. uh, there's a certain kind of drug that. Uh, that men give to women when they rape them to make them, you know, go unconscious or something. And uh, she she had that in her system. And then uh, he, he found that, in fact, she had a supply of it at home. She was the one who drugged herself to make it look like she'd been raped. Um, so, you know, the, it was little by little you began to see that you you were it was a fake out it was a fake out on the viewer and at the end i have to say while i appreciate that they did a good job on faking me out i i didn't really like that i'm sorry and it was the mother that found that rape drug in her in her place of yes her. yes yes <laughs> we had tried well, the, and the was, mother never said anything you know so i mean to me, perfect mother, sorry, doesn't fly with me. I would, if I had a child, I would never let my child get away with murder, you know. Uh, well, I mean, what would you have done? What would you have done? She, she didn't want her daughter to go to jail. And she would have been in jail for a long time for a premeditated murder, um, a brutal murder, uh, and a, 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 a highly publicized murder of a, of a highly publicized uh, victim. Um, you know, what, what would you have done? What is the lesson that she's going to give her daughter when she gets her back to Berlin? How do you know that this, that if, if this young woman thinks she can get away with this, how do you teach her that you can't, you can't get away with this? What, you know, to the of her life, the lesson is that you can do anything you want and you can get out of it. But that, that's a bad lesson for her daughter, right? So how's the mother going to, we never get past the, the end of the movie, but how is the mother and father going to rectify? Now they, and then they, you get into a lot of things that the father was an MD and he was like, oh yeah, neglecting his children. Very similar to the, to the uh, movie with the lake house. Another uh, deal where the architect really neglects, his, doesn't really give his children the, so, so that's, that's another key tie in, right? is that the, the doctor was not, uh, you know, he wasn't there for his kids, right? He was, he was too busy with his patients and his, his career, right? 
and, and the perfect mother, she was trying to be so perfect, right, that that she she ended up being not perfect at all, you know, because she, you know she, she didn't want to be like her own mother, right? Uh, so she, so she pretty much she must have given her daughter some freedom, or I don't know, but but uh, you know. Well, you know, it's interesting that you um, that you speculate on what would happen, well, assuming the characters were. Um, you know, maintained the character that they showed us during those four episodes. But at the end, uh, the, the perfect mother takes the daughter, Anya, back to Berlin from whence she came. And you have to ask yourself, what, what happened back in Berlin? What was going to happen? And, and the answer is, I guess, let me throw this at you. She, the, the perfect mother wasn't going to say anything. She was going to keep this secret deep and dark inside her forever. She was never going to tell the daughter that she knew the story and that she knew the daughter was a murderer. And for the father, the doctor, didn't even know. So, um, you know, what I think what, what it tells you is that she was perfect, uh, if you consider this perfection, till the end, um, that she would not have told her, not have challenged her, and the daughter would have gotten away with it and figured that not only had she fooled everyone in in the in the in the program she fooled her mother too um she didn't know that her mother knew and her mother wasn't going to say anything that's that's where it really goes in berlin i think but you know a lot of families i mean my family has, has secrets you know uh my mother's uncle had an affair with sinclair oils uh, uh opera singer wife and they had a child but nobody Everybody denied it, and then my mother's heritage, as we've talked about, that was never talk, spoken of, you know, because in that community, it's difficult. So, there, you know, bottom line, I think it's a very good point, George, that no family is perfect. And a lot of these movies that we see now, because they're more sophisticated all the time, really, I and mean, you can see that from our, our track on reviewing these movies. Um, is that no family is perfect. They all have a little something, or sometimes a big something, and the movie plays on that. And, and, th and this, cer this certainly did that. And, I, and if you think back, there's a lot of movies that we've seen, not only the ones we've reviewed, but the ones we've seen on Netflix and, and Prime and wherever else that, that play on the, this family dynamic, this family secret kind of thing, and the fact that it's never really perfect at all. So it's a misnomer to say that she was un mere parfait. She wasn't perfect. She was imperfect. So what, what, do, you, what do you give this, this movie, all that considered, what kind of rating on a scale of 10? Uh, that's a different because I don't like the, the conclusion. But uh, acting great, uh, give it a nine and a half. The only reason I'm not giving it a 10 is because I don't like the way it ended. I don't like that she got off, like that young woman got off starting stuff. The acting was good, scenery was good, uh, the interplay, the questioning, the way you like pieces, like putting together a puzzle, perfect. So a nine, of, nine and a half. I'll give it a nine. Uh, well, I, uh, I feel that it was good to, uh, to do a replay of the one in CBS in 1997. I, I feel that um, the acting was good, the, the characters were. Faithful, the script was good. It was good. It might have been better than the script back in 1997 on CBS. Um, and, I, and I imagine that the European audience, the French audience, really liked this movie. Um, but I'm with you on, on the ending. I'm just troubled by it. Um, but that's the story, George. That's, that is the story. <laughs> you, can't, you can't fault them. You know, it's like, it's like it's going to Love O.M., uh, the opera and saying, oh, I, I hated that. I hated the plot. Come on, it's not the plot we care about. <laughs> I mean, I mean he, he, that, that was the original plot of the story. So you, uh, on the other hand, I, I, I'm absolutely together with you on the notion that I, I was disappointed in the, in the failure of the perfect mother. I felt that I had been misled by all this. Um, I'm not sure that it could have been or was that way in the original story or in the CBS performance back in 
1997. So I give it a nine at the max and maybe less. Um, they, they really, they played with us. And uh, I don't really like when they play with us. I would rather not have that. Okay? It's personal. It's subjective. But that's what we do here on the movie show, George. We are completely subjective, aren't we? Because you can't really, and anybody who goes into a movie theater or now with uh, COVID, you know, you always, it always plays into your own feelings, your own life, your own existence, you know. I, I personally can't separate a movie from, you know, uh, I mean, I loved uh, Pretty Woman. Remember that? that we even reviewed that. I mean, that stayed in my memory for years and years. I mean, that was my favorite movie forever to all time. And, and so it plays into, you know, your feelings, you know. So I, I couldn't agree with you more that, that there's a little bit of s sadness here as what the, le the lesson that this movie projects. Hard. It was hard what it was. It was a hard view of life. Um, okay, so the, the one we are contemplating for next time is Forget Me Not. Um, it's an English movie, and all the movies these days are European, it seems like. Um, and it's, it's about an overnight love affair. And uh, I found it very interesting, and we should not discuss what happens here because it is a complete and total surprise. And suffice to say, it is an overnight love affair that will keep you interested. Next time. Two weeks. Thank Thank you, George. Uh, always, always fun to do this. And uh, we can never, ever keep up with these movies, but we try. Give it a shot, right? Well, thank you, Dave. Have a good evening. You too. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.